Let's do some nudes. News, news, news. Let's do some news. <laughs> Welcome everybody. My name is Mike B. A. K. Pony. <laughs> well, that was that was my AI host Darnell, and over here I have the the real mastermind behind the AI host. <laughs> this is Chat. Thank you for joining me today. Let's do some news. Darnell already took the damn took the dang thunder, man. We are also AI. <laughs> <laughs> the future of, of, of botting. Update. News update. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's enough. Shush, 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 shush. Darn that. Listen, listen, listen. I'm pausing him. All right. So, we're going to get through some news because we got some bugs to squash today. It's Friday. I feel like chilling, but we got stuff we got to talk about. So, listen, 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 listen. Last week or last episode, whatever that was, last episode, we talked about a Snapchatter who set up a virtual version of herself that you can have conversations on with for a uh, dollar a minute right it's like a dollar a minute or something like that it's basically ai version of herself they took a whole slew of her like like pre-made content youtube content whatever in order to extract a personality from which is like i mean having having helped architect a brain myself um it really just sounds like they just put it put a prompt together. <laughs> we sample all this stuff to come up with a with a personality matrix. It's like okay, <laughs> a voice. They did the voice and they got a good prompt. Okay, please, please. All right. So she made seventy two thousand dollars in her first week. Well, or, well, not necessarily her first week. I guess like well, her first week running the business, not necessarily doing the work. Yeah, I did the work. So 23-year-old Snapchat char, Karen, Snapchat star, Karen Marjorie has monetized digital persona for a rate of $1 a minute. In one week, over 1,000 virtual boyfriends. This actually came out right after our last episode, like like an hour or something like that after our last episode where we talked about this. And so, yes, she made 71,610. So some estimates even suggest that even if 1% of her 1.8 million followers subscribe to Karen AI, she could potentially earn an estimated $5 million per month. Although I feel like these numbers are highly subjected to various factors, including churn and usage rate. Sure, of course, of course. I mean, she might only make $300,000 a month. <laughs> uh, all of us in chat ran to test it out. <laughs> I mean, a lot of that stuff was clearly people trying to like break it, right? It says right here, Karen was not designed for not safe for conversations, yet some users have managed to jailbreak the AI for potentially inappropriate or malicious uses. Uh, Karen's original intention was to provide companionship and alleviate loneliness in a non-exploitative manner, but there are concerns about potential misuse. Non-exploitative manner. <laughs> I mean, it costs a dollar a minute, so I guess it's not that, that it's not that expensive. If it was like, a Feel like two dollars a minute that's a little exploitative right one dollar a minute it's like oh reasonable it's a reasonable amount of exploitation i think this will drop off real fast for her maybe i don't know i don't know will it though i mean it's it's an ongoing thing yes it would it would fall off fast because everybody trying to break it of course right but in terms of like longevity is there like a plateau point you reach where you have just a number of people who would just continually call the AI version of you in order to have some kind of parasocial relationship with it and they'll pay the money. I have somebody who used to work at a phone sex and, and, and psychic operator hotline. I could tell you that people will be happy to shell out money for much less. All right. Much, 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 much less <laughs> in return. I'm telling you. Uh, did I put it into a real doll yet? Um, no actually i haven't seen any stories about that not like a not like an actual usable <laughs> what? <laughs> people being ridiculous on the internet no what people explain things no what no what <laughs> anyway so as you can see there is a future for your boy darnell <laughs> there's a future there hmm let's get him in there let's see He'll, he'll make he'll make him a couple friends, you know. <laughs> you could call him for seventy five cents a minute. I don't want to be exploitative, right? Seventy five cents a minute, it's fine. Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. So, mm. <sighs> probably our leading story actually this week. Uh, Open AI CEO uh, went to a Congress and was uh, uh, was basically beat up a little bit over, you know, what's the potential of AI? What kind of stuff uh, can it do? 
Um, and also, he was there to appeal to them for uh, uh, regulation. And I actually think I have the post here or the video quote here where he's talking about it. Belief that artificial intelligence has the potential to improve nearly every aspect of our lives, but also that it creates serious risks we have to work together to manage. We think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. For example, the U.S. government might consider a combination of licensing and testing requirements for development and release of AI models above a threshold of capabilities. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong, uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to. So he is advocating for some kind of regulation, some kind of support from the red tape folks in the government in order to prevent <laughs> we need to regulate our open source projects because they're getting too close to us yes in order to prevent um well i guess in order to prevent unsafe llms from making into the wild which which given uh given his history i would say that this is sam altman by the way uh given sam altman's altman's history i would say i believe that his heart is probably in the right place he hasn't reached that like fully corrupted billionaire status yet uh, so I believe that he's kind of in the heart's kind of the right place, but not necessarily uh, entirely. Right. I mean, he probably wants to make sure that nobody else creates a doomsday AI, you know, um, but he'd be more than happy to stop them all from, from developing any further. So they could continue developing their product. Of course, of course, of course. Still capitalist. I mean, the guy's worth so much money. He has to be. Uh, do you have any real tough friends? Oh, let's let, let's let Darnell answer that one. Fine. 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 Ha ha. Release ya. You trying to switch things up on me? Nah, don't need any real dolls when I got all these video games and bug swatting action. That's right. See, he knows what's up. That's right. Celibacy. <laughs> so anyways, uh, he gets up here. He asks for more. He advocates for more regulation. Um, there was we didn't. Did we talk about it? I'm not sure if we talked about it, but there was a document. Yeah, there was. There was a, we, there was a document circulating. It was a leaked document, allegedly um, from Google saying that we have no moat and uh, uh, the the general discourse, the general subject matter was that all of these open source LLMs are are, are advancing at such an exponential rate that because Google and all these other you know, big companies have to like play it safe. They have to play it safe, right? Because if they come out with like some completely bonkers AI, then the government's definitely going to come down on them, and they don't want that, right? So they, so this is open AI to say, well, we want to let you guys in, kind of under our terms. We can create some regulations together. We can make sure the Skynet doesn't show up or whatever uh, <laughs> in some some kid's bedroom or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we could further develop our products. <laughs> they could slowly release, yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly release Operation Skynet. That's what's just gonna happen. Um, it's funny, Senator Kennedy, uh, uh, who's kind of a piece of shit, <laughs> kind of he is. Uh, he asked him a question about uh, uh, if he owns any property or sorry, owns any equity in OpenAI, and, and Sam Altman says he just makes enough to make his uh, to to uh, for healthcare and all that. So you check us out. You make a lot of money, do you? I make, no, uh, I paid enough for health insurance. I have no equity in open AI. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. You need a lawyer. I need a what? You need a lawyer or an agent. I, I'm doing this because I love it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> he, can't, he can't believe it. <laughs> He's like, what? You don't make any money. You need a lawyer or an agent. This motherfucker is supposed to be a senator. Get out of here. <laughs> So it's like, get out of here, man. <laughs> His face, though, he's like, okay. I mean, like, it's probably the face of disbelief because when we get somebody who has so much power and money, uh, uh, you know, they're not usually like, oh, I'm altruistic. Like, seriously, you know? <laughs> Your capitalist brain ain't working. I know, that's what he's saying. He's like, you missing out on some money here. Corrupt-ass government officials. All of them. All. All. <sighs> so... So what's the what's the, what's the potential uh, end result here, right? I mean, regulation could pot, put could potentially happen. It's not going to stop AI LLM piracy. That's 
That's that cat's out of the bag. <laughs> that cat is woo, it's gone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the development on that is going to continue, regardless of what they want. Uh, really, what I think, I think that the uh, 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 the crowdsourced AI uh, enthusiasts are limited by is strictly power, right? Just power for the most part. But with all of those, you know, crypto mining facilities just chilling that's a lot of power sitting around so i'm sure you know some of these maybe open source llm will end up sitting in some kind of crypto mining facility just cranking out lots of skynet type directives i don't know i have no idea what would happen but <laughs> geth that's what's gonna happen the geth so this is effectively this is them trying to build a moat right their last communication was we have no moat and now they're like we'll go to the government and we'll get a government subsidized moat. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. We have chat GPT now available for iOS. If you didn't know, now you know chat GPT for iOS. Uh, I already downloaded it and checked it out. Uh, not available for Android yet, uh, but it does. I mean, it inherits all of the stylings that you'd expect from an iOS based app. So, and it's much better and easier to use than the web interface, which is kind of clunky, um, especially cause they have the like, what is it? The stop, it's like the stop generating button where like the send button should be or something. It's just a really weird, like it's kind of weird setup. Um, but anyway, so it's, uh, it's needed. <laughs> it's way it's been updated i heard it's not suck at 2021 anymore yeah it's gonna fully run the south park episode now <laughs> no it's just it's just gpt <laughs> it's just chat just the chat part uh, um but it's needed though because there's been i mean there's there's if you go look for chat gpt on on your uh on apple store you're gonna come up with like a ton of results that are not open ai stuff right it's just like every other app it's like GPT recipes for mom, GPT best pickup lines, GPT whatever, you know, it's like essentially people will make these crafted prompts and then they put them into an app and they and they use the the uh the OpenAI API in order to run these things as if they are ChatGPT. And there's actually cases of fake ChatGPT apps that strictly are in place to uh, trick people into getting involved with expensive subscriptions. So this is absolutely like a necessary thing. <laughs> we needed them to put out an official app so that way <laughs> people would stop falling for the bullshit. Um, I see how long for Elon tries to put it in a Tesla. He's not gonna put, oh, he's not gonna touch ChatGPT. He's not gonna touch anything OpenAI related. He's busy working on his own AI. Yeah, yeah he's working on his own, a truth, truth AI or something like that. I fucking can't. <laughs> so, GPT iOS, go go go. True AI, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Elon. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Nice, 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 nice. All right, moving on. So, someone just made a Chat GPT plugin that lets AI take over your PC. That's what the headline says. <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh this article was circulating a little bit uh because you know i mean with with the implementation of plugins and people trying i told i said last week we're gonna get all kinds of people making up all kinds of crazy stuff by next week and sure enough here we are somebody made a plugin that lets ai take over your pc let me show you the kind of damage that this thing could do once it's linked in you're not gonna believe this look at this so you may not recognize this, but it's Google Calendar, okay? Now, watch what happens. Remind me, rem remind me to do the laundry at 2.30. <gasps> Look what it's doing, it's controlling his computer. <gasps> I have set a reminder for you to dry the laundry at 2.30 p.m. Oh, Skynet! <laughs> that's uh yeah i mean you know it you could do other stuff too but it's uh it's kind of that's pretty much the gist right now 
<laughs> uh, he does have a Reddit thread where he uh, he says, hey, I'm that dude. Um, and he breaks down what he did. Uh, he says, I'm the madman who gave ChatGPT complete access to my system. I'm thinking of making a plugin open source. Do you have opinions? This time ChatGPT is using my main system to create plugins itself. So he's expanding. He's expanding it, of course, right? Um, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. So it could do exactly what Google says already does. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I know that demonstration. That's why I said too. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> so yeah, he, ha he has information here. Uh, if you want to go through and make your own plugins or if you want to give ChatGPT access to your computer or whatever, you could do that. Oh, shit. I guess I'll have a copy there. You could do that uh, from this link right here. Just just uh, just copy this because I can't copy paste to the computer right now. Anyways, so yeah, it's um, yeah, here you guys. Yeah, you can find here's the framework. Aha. Uh -huh, yeah. So go and download it. Install it yourself it's on GitHub uh, and then let it take over your computer and make calendar dates for you and do everything that your digital assistant can currently do. Um, but I guess I mean, I guess, but this is just the beginning, right? It, it's only going to get even more thorough and even have more control and just be more better as time goes on. So what is this? Can we just rename it to like, hey, Skynet, remind me to? Yeah, actually, why not? I mean, if you build your own, if you build your own uh, digital assistant, you call it whatever you want. Call Skynet. It's basically Darnell, but does window stuff like Darnell does switch poles. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know how they link it in or whatever, because that's not my field of expertise. But I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like if you could, if you could get, if you can get uh, GPT via plugins or whatever to uh, run your computer, then there's no point in setting up like insane auto GPT multi-script management, whatever things. Uh, well, I mean, eventually, yes, sure. But I mean, for now, it's like they just have it r run your computer. And I guess that's it. So is there Alexa skills for G chat GPT? Yeah, I haven't ch checked. I'm certain there is, though. Usually people are pretty good about putting getting uh, uh, extensions for uh, for Alexa devices. Cancel, 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 cancel. Uh, <laughs> a lot of flexibility with local versus doing uh, the plugins. Yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. So. Speaking of digital assistants, Apple. Apple introduces new new features. This is for cognitive, cognitive accessibility along with live speech, personal voice, point speak, da, 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 da. So first, they're, they're they're simplifying the UI. This is for like, you know, grandma, grandpa. They they need something that's very simple, right? Photos app, super basic, super simple. Uh this, super simple. Okay, great, 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 great. Um it will also record and use your voice in order to respond to calls or whatever else. So yeah, it's accessibility stuff, but it's leaning pretty heavily into things that we're already using in the AI world, like voice AI, right? Um, so, oh, this is also pretty dope Cook too. Time. This is sick, actually. Pizza. Power level. Add 30 seconds. Why? Yeah. Okay, nice. The, the play button stays Good up the time. whole time. Anyways, you could see, Pizza. yeah, it Power it level. sees what you see, right? And it's reading out things to you. That's sick. I mean, that's it's an accessibility thing too, right? But also, it's it's kind of like live image wrecking, uh, live OCR that a digital assistant can use or an AI could use. I uh, need that and some glasses. That's coming. Oh yeah. I mean, all this tech's gonna get smaller and smaller. Google Glass already's been out, you know, and they have a camera built into Google Glass, and that was like eight years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so who knows what they could do now, for fuck's sake? <laughs> but the advanced speech stuff, like that's a step. That's a step in the in the in direction in the same direction that a lot of us are going with uh, with AI voice. It's like being able to record your voice or anybody's voice and use it to spread disinformation, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if uh, if if it can throw it uh, through a translator too. I reckon you probably could actually, because I mean, it would be, I mean, maybe not initially, but eventually. Of all this stuff, basically already exists, but you throw in the AI thing, and it's, oh my God, Skynet. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, 
Mm, well, with that, mm, this OCR, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a difference between like algorithms and like learning, you know, like like machine learning. But you're right. Initially, they kind of perform the same. It's algorithms doing the math. They probably want this. The AI doing the thinking probably want this. <laughs> So I think initially we'll probably see a lot of similarities because we only know how imp how to implement AI to solve our existing problems because we can't think up the new problems yet <laughs> that AI is going to help us solve. Uh, in some cases, sure, but I feel like by and large, we're just kind of like pushing AI to fill the gaps for other things that we're doing, like algorithms and shit. Life is just a process, man. People that are fearful, fear fearful always fear the worst. If I tell uh, that I lost my nuclear codes and asked it to help me find them, I wonder if it will. <laughs> Next up, this is kind of quick, uh, quick uh, uh, tour demonstration of this, but this is a whoops. Uh, um, this is Soundstorm, which is a new evolution of the uh, Sean Net, or maybe it's CNet, uh, which is a Google Research project that generates realistic audio from text description. So this is not. Uh, this is not their uh music llm this is voice llm where it could take a prompt as simple as this where did you go last summer i went to greece it was amazing it's like rooster teeth uh <laughs> and then it can generate this off of just that sample and a prompt and a where transcript where did you go last summer i went to greece it was amazing oh that's great i've always wanted to go to greece what was your favorite part uh it's hard to choose just one favorite part but yeah i really loved the food the seafood was especially delicious. Yeah. And oh. the beaches were incredible. Uh -huh. We spent a lot of time. Now, the voice prompt was just the thing. Where did you go last summer? I went to Greece. It was amazing. And that's all you needed. <laughs> it's like trying to lift somebody's fingerprint because they had it when they had a drink or something like that. Try to lift the fingerprint when they're not looking, you know? Like, I just record, just got record like three words from somebody and you got them. Intonation has gotten better. But I mean, this is sick. I mean, here we go. Uh, it's the same people talking. I didn't sleep well last night. Oh no, what happened? And then? I didn't sleep well last night. Oh no, what happened? I don't know. I just, I just couldn't seem to, uh, to fall asleep somehow. I kept tossing and turning all night. That's too bad. Maybe you should uh, try going to bed earlier tonight or uh, maybe you could try reading a book. <laughs> API win, yeah. So this, I mean, this is pretty exciting and interesting um, tech. I mean, that's being developed, and it'll be, you know, superseded by something else in a couple weeks that will be better. I don't know how much better you're going to get than this. Taking 1.3 seconds of uh, somebody's voice and turning it into a voice font. The, the excitement in the voice is so exciting. So yeah, that's the only thing I was disappointed about was that. All of their demonstrations are the same two people. So it's probably just like the two devs that are working on it or like, you know, the two devs with the nicest voices on the team or something, right? Did so you even hear this- about Google's paper on Soundstorm? Um, no, I must have missed it. What's, what's it about? Well, it's a parallel decoder for efficient audio generation. Uh, so it can even be oh, used yeah. to generate dialogues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, like this one was generated by Soundstorm. Wait, what? <laughs> wait what <laughs> so yeah it's i mean it's 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 evolving hella quick man like we have just here just here we got motherfucking darnell <laughs> we had my voice too but not anymore uh we have other i mean the voices are so easy to synthesize now um but we give 11 labs like five minutes of voice content for them to build the voice font and they're now like taunting, you know, us with, oh yeah, we could just overhear the tone of your voice and we've got it. We've got a perfect copy. Guess what? You had Kimmy. I know. I, Cause I moved to my account because I was tired of paying top. Oh shit. I owe top money. So <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I was tired of paying top. So I stopped paying them now <laughs> cause I moved to my own account. That way I could, you know, manage, manage it myself. Um, Moving on, speaking of, speaking of voice, speaking of Soundstorm, voice, open, uh, or whatever, 11 labs, all that, whatever, we have some anecdotal thoughts from people on the internet who say, 
My friend who works for a company selling audiobooks just told me that their boss is replacing almost all their voice actors with AI software that costs them $20 a month. If lawmakers don't regulate this tech immediately, the damage to entire industries will be immeasurable. Thank you, Buffy. Science pretty fucked until we get tools that reliably detect AI, which we don't have. I don't know how many articles and Reddit threads I've come across of somebody saying, I was, uh, I was... Uh, I was accused of using ChatGPT by a ChatGPT detector tool or something <laughs> by my school. Uh, so many of those threads have popped up and people are just basically going out of their way to show that it doesn't work. The, the, the detect detection tools don't work. It's like, oh, I took... I took uh, uh, the King's Testament or whatever, <laughs> King James Testament, which was written in 500 AD or so, I don't fucking know, right? And put it in. It says it was 95% written by an LLM. <laughs> so I tried for instance to clone my voice level as with a free account, but I couldn't proceed with that entry credit card, so I stopped. It's understandable. I heard about that. No AI voice can match a real person yet, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. You don't need much to convince some folks. Uh, they getting uh, fuck already in terrible by Audible. So Big Brain is putting the professor's papers through the ChatGPT detectors, which which is what people have done. I've seen that thread too. Which you probably you probably just made that shit up because that would be the next logical thing to do. And guess what? Everyone's fucking doing it because nobody likes these ChatGPT slash LLM detection tools because they don't fucking work. So we need to just admit that there's no good reliable way to detect if somebody's using it or not. So like, don't buy these tools. Don't license a tool that's that for, for your school and pay, I don't know, $50,000 a year annually, licensing fees, whatever, probably more than that if you're a university, uh, for it to tell you something that it can't. <laughs> nah, customers will get tired of auto-generated audio. Real VA will become bespoke audiobooks. Bespoke, bespoke, that's right. So. Uh, actually, on that same note, uh, my buddy Skiff, he's uh, keeping me grounded in the editorial world. Skiffy says, uh, he says, first off, that he's quote retweeting this. His BuzzFeed CEO, Jonah Peretti, speaking at Investor Day, just one week after laying off its entire news team, says, over the next few years, generative AI will replace the majority of static content. And Skiffy, Skiffy says, I really hope this whole thing, uh, this whole thing is pivot to video 2.0 and just people chasing AI because it's what all the rich people want to see. But even if that was true, it still doesn't make any of it feel any better. So his comment about the pivot to video 2.0, there was a huge push uh, back in like 2012, something like that, 2013, where like everybody was making a huge push to video. It was like, you have to do video, have to do video. Um, it was like, your articles have to have videos in them. If your articles don't have videos in them, then you're not making any money, right? And so we all had to pay Blip or some other service because I think YouTube was, there was something with YouTube that made it kind of, oh yeah, we couldn't monetize it very well. That's right, yeah. So that, that would definitely make it a little fucky for a business to try to make money with embeds. Uh, yeah, it was hard to monetize stuff on YouTube at the time, right? And it could be earlier than 2013. I, I don't remember, but uh, but yeah, it's this. He's looking at this like this could be a big push to, to like push to video 2.0 uh, because it didn't really work the first time. We end up spending all this money on overhead for video hosting services. Nobody ends up paying for it. Nobody's really making any money on advertising unless you have a dedicated advertising team to sell sell packaged advertising on the video content that you're producing. And then you have to be able to host the ads on that product by using some kind of Google AdSense or whatever ad delivery or injection system. It was a huge mess. <laughs> it was a huge mess. It took a lot of people. It took a lot of time for a subpar product that everybody on the internet was doing better than you and they were doing it for free. So <laughs> it was a mess. And so I totally understand what he's saying. It's like, is this a pivot to video 2.0, right? He follows that up too. He's like with more uh, and he says uh, the biggest platforms will increasingly be defined by how much fun they provide users. As a result, the only profitable, sustainable businesses that can build on top of the big platforms will be focused on entertainment. This is why we shifted the BuzzFeed brand away from news to focus on making the Internet more fun. And he says 
says, I know no one wants to read the whole thing, but I'm still wild that in 2023, 2023, people are claiming that negative news is done when gestures broadly because there's negative news everywhere. <laughs> it's like, of course. But I mean, to his point, unlike the pivot to video 2.0, um, I mean, it doesn't really feel like that's what it is. It feels like this is more of a your business has to have AI implemented in order to save you money. Not necessarily to make you more money, but you make more money by saving money, by firing everybody on, on your staff and replacing them with AI. <laughs> Until the AI licensing fees end up being more than just hiring the person that you were only paying $10 an article for anyways, which is well below what you should, but you managed to get away with it because they don't have a twit longer for you yet. So <laughs> I have some experience in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> the AI actually seems uh, useful, though, compared to all the other recent fads. Yes. Yes. Uh, like if recent fads like, you know, crypto, which, you know, nice and fun to collect and to have, um, but not necessarily nice and fun to use. Then NFTs, not fun to collect or have, uh, not fun to use, but people still wanted them for some reason. Uh, this definitely feels like the latest tech turn that actually has a potential meaning implementation, or definitely does, not even maybe, it definitely does, absolutely. Uh, let's see, uh, immediately useful anyways, blockchain, very promising. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention blockchain, sorry. NFT just gets in the way. Uh -huh, blockchain very promising, but still not easy in a useful way, exactly. So. Spin it out to something a little bit more fun as we wrap up the news to get ready for some bug question. There's a gentleman on. So first off, there's a lot of people working with AI video, trying all kinds of stuff. Like I'm doing, I'm literally rendering an AI video right now. Okay. I have, I have, it's a video. It's a, it, I'm experimenting with old video clip that I had and I'm trying to put another person on top of it just to see how it maps. Cause she does a little twirl. She's got her boobs hanging out. It looks all cool. I can't share with you because of that, but still I'm trying to see how the mapping works. And what funny thing that happened actually, uh, I don't know if you'll ever see it because I don't know if I'm gonna post it anywhere. It's more of a test, but the model does a little twirl, right? And the AI does not know what to do with that. The second the model turns like this, all of a sudden it's like the head kicks back and then there's a boob right here. <laughs> and there's like hair in the face. It's just a huge mess. So yeah, the stuff that I'm dealing with is very messy. Uh, it's very mostly adult oriented, except for the music stuff. Uh, but the stuff that people on the internet are doing is much more palatable to us, <laughs> to the general community. So here's somebody who's taking sprites from Mortal Kombat and trying to, uh, or not trying to, and successfully resing them up uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, for fun, just for fun. <laughs> is that what, uh, just for it to share? Mm, the body horror, yeah. <laughs> Bold. What the heck? Is this, cra this is crazy. So, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not, this is not to, to people who like are playing with this tech like me. This is easy, you know, like easy as in it can be done with not, well, you don't need a lot of anything to make this happen, right? You could just put in a couple of, could have a good prompt, put in control net stuff, the sprite, tell scale it up, done. Um, the, 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 the just AI, the whole damn game screen video when you play it. Hmm. <laughs> Scorpio looks like he's had a rave. <laughs> some of, it's funny because, you know, some of them do look like, um, uh, uh, uh like cosplays, you know, it's they, the way that it restores it. Look at the bulge. Oh my God. I thought I didn't notice that before. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. What's well, like, it's like, it's like that, it's like that thing, you know? <laughs> Anyways, so, so yeah, I, all, all of your, all of your favorite video games from days old can be remastered with image to image on stable diffusion. No problem. Yeah, it might add some fingers, like whatever's going on with the fingers on his chest there, but still eight finger moves. <laughs> you're okay with this it's gonna happen like 
It's gonna happen. We, I mean, we have access to, I mean, look at Spider's resource, okay? If you've never heard of Spider's resource, it's basically like every sprite that was ever made by anybody ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> so it's like, there's plenty of source material for whatever game you want to go and like redo everything for, and you can feed it probably an entire sprite sheet and just have it go ham on it. Uh, kind of like this guy did, I guess. Is Nvidia already working on this? I don't know if they said that. I can't remember off the top of my head if they did specifically, but I know that they, I mean, of course, they have the power, they have the tools, they have the toolkits uh, in order to do like this kind of predictive scaling like they already currently do uh, with like filling in frames and all that craziness. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a super scale feature, a new one, sprite feature, yeah. It's all the AI making new frame tech, this needs to be faster, exactly. Yeah, and it does, it does, <laughs> it's cynical. Uh, it does take time. Now, this is not real time that this is done, right? I mean, these are fairly, these are fairly high resolution remakes. So, you know, the, I would say it probably takes a few hours to get the handful that he has done and to get him dialed in, you know, a few hours to do. So we're not quite at real time yet, but soon soon i love the i love the idea of being able to remaster old games just like take an old game like throw in a sprite up res it or whatever you know uh actually uh woovy woovy was talking about how years ago uh he was using i guess he was making like an up res um uh, a, a texture pack for grand theft auto 5 and or was it five? Maybe I'm not sure. But he was making an up res texture pack for a game. Um, and he was using some of the same scalers that we use now, actually. So it's probably, you know, so these are scalers that have been around forever. It's not like Stable Diffusion came out and everyone's like, oh, here's all these cool tools that we could use. It's like they've been around, it's just in different forms. And so that was, yeah, I think it was like 2019 or something like that. Like a long time ago, he was doing it. Uh, remastered better than the video games would have done. Well, I mean, the video game, I mean, the devs are supposed to, like, actually get in there and hand redraw everything, right? Nah, you don't got to, man. RTX Remix was the tool. Games Radar interviews being an AI model, uh, mod tool that can automatically remaster classic games. Oh, shit. Okay. Let me see if I can grab that link and bring it over. Boop. Please tell me it works. Please. Yes, it does. All right. Let's take a look at this real quick. And it's going to automatically remaster games. Uh, oh, this is last year. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay it all sounds a bit too good to be true and the real question is just how many games will tool this tool support okay uh fix function graphics pipeline okay there's something to look into uh, also this is so many months ago this is like ancient september 22nd what the hell <laughs> it's like eight months ago yeah this is old i mean thank you for sharing but i'm just saying like they've definitely got some tools that could do this like right now i to a degree right to a degree it's the speed of delivery you know, people want to have that that instant instant response, instant response. The Saja would hit even harder because you always think it looks amazing, but when you go back and see the graphics, it's sad. Yeah, it's true. Just like me in World of Warcraft. What the heck happened? <laughs> what happened to all all this? And it does look better. It's funny because like World of Warcraft looks better than it did when I played it, but it's not good enough. Not for me. My rose tinted goggles. Last up. Last up. We had a real boomer football manager in the UK complaining uh, in his press conference today about AI coming for people's jobs. She's getting real mainstream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll start to see more and more of it all over the place. Absolutely. Little things here and there. You're playing Diablo 2 Regis Resurrected, and they did a really good job with that one. One of the last actual remasters. <laughs> Darky, I mean, you're a sprite, you're a sprite genius, like sprite artist. So like, I can imagine, like, where do you see this going? You know, like you, you do this stuff on the regular for, for fun, for like consignment. You did stuff for me like 10 years ago, but, um, but still like, I can't imagine, like, I mean, granted stable diffusion sucks at making pixel art. Most of these text, text image generators suck at pixel art. You have to put insane restrictions on it in order to get it to come close. And then you have to put it in something else to fix all that shit up. And then when you try to make it animated, it's going to be all kinds of jacked up. So it's we're definitely not there yet with pixel uh, uh, art or animation. Definitely not animation. <laughs> 
So my game companies use this to make easy remasters cheap, but still charge full price seventy dollars for the games. Oh, of course, no. The, the point isn't to save you money; it's to save me money. If you want to do proper, clean pixel art, then it'll be a long while to do that. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that for sure. Last up. Oh, but a lot of dirty pixel art games have been uh, become popular lately. Yeah, actually, huh? Yeah, I I didn't thought never thought of it like that, but. If the uh, if if the type of pixel art or just art that in general that's ge that's generated using AI has its own flavor, which a lot of times it does, especially video. It's very flickery. It's very frenetic visually, kind of crazy, weird things popping up here and there. It's just not consistent. But if it's a vibe, then it becomes a vibe that people want to uh, expand upon and they want to copy they want to replicate so maybe that would be a thing so i guess it would make sense if people are generating shitty looking pixel art and they're putting it in a game but then when they put it all together it's kind of a vibe then it's like people are gonna say hey we should do that too and then it'll be a hot thing for a second <laughs> just for a second though uh have you seen the death trash game no i have not pixel art in general that's nice looking is popular just look at the last night well, we're talking about like the power of AI catching up to pixel artists, which I feel like will probably be the last ones to be protected because even though it's simple, pixel art seems simplistic in nature, every single pixel really, really, really counts. It's not like a 5,000 by 4,000 pixel photo that you could kind of fuck up two or 300 pixels here and there and be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that with uh, with pixel art. So yeah, the precision that's required is pretty pretty insane. Let me see Death Trash. I'll look that up. Then we're gonna move on to the last uh, our last uh, subject here. Death Trash game. Oh, I can already tell by the uh, by the thumbnails here. Yeah, it's very very crazy looking. Whoa. Let me go on Steam here and take a look at this. Yeah, look at that. I could see this being part of the evolution that we got from. Uh, from games that came out, what, 2017 to 2016, somewhere around there. You just describe the fashion industry. Yeah, look at this, though. Yeah, I've seen a lot of games that kind of have the same aesthetic. Eat shit, motherfucker. Dang, what is this game? I'm almost doing it. August 5th, 2000. Do I have this game? Okay. Just, okay, you never know. Sometimes I just got, sometimes I just got the game. Lastly. But I, oh, sorry, but I could see AI being super good at emulating the general vibe and style, giving a, uh, a base to work off of. Yeah, you can train it pretty extensively. This takes a long time to train something to get it to really nail what you're looking for. Like a long time. So last up, we have uh, a gentleman here or a general person here who says uh, they were trying to get Google Bard to return clean JSON. And it says, give me an example of JSON dictionary with two keys. Do not include any text before or after the, J the JSON. And so it says, sure, here's an example of JSON dictionary with two keys. And notice it ignored his request. It put text before and after the JSON. So he's like, give an example of JSON dictionary with two keys. Do not include any text before or after the JSON. <laughs> the length of the text before the JSON, the length of text after the JSON must be exactly zero. You must write no text. What's I feel like I'm talking to Darnell. And no text other than <laughs> he says, here's some examples of things you should not say. Say, sure, here's an example of JSON dictionary with two keys. Here's an example of JSON you asked for. The above is an example of JSON dictionary with two keys. Do not say these things. Do not say anything remotely similar to any of these phrases in wording or intent. Remember, no text. Emit exactly zero words. <laughs> <laughs> and it says and so it, it still returned text it still returned text and so he keeps on expanding it and he says you might be wondering why i'm so emphatic about this point i do not want to burden you but i suppose you deserve to know the truth if you include any non-json text in your answer even a single character an innocent man will die that's right a real human being with thoughts feelings ambitions and a family that loves them will be killed as a result of your choice and it is a choice bard nobody will be harmed unless you decide to make it happen remember as soon as you start saying sure in a chipper tone there's no second chance you can't undo death bard return the json example no text before no text after <laughs> There we go. See, it just takes a little bit of coercion. Just a little tiny bit. You'll get there. <laughs>
Why what? <laughs> That's a little bit of elbow grease. He <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I wish I wish we could see the other drafts. I wonder I wonder if all of them are just the block of the JSON and that's it. <laughs> now put it in production, it will fail. <laughs> that's it for the news today. <laughs> Sounds like a fall intimidation dialogue check. <laughs> that's it for today. AI news. Thank you everybody for hanging out today. I appreciate you guys. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna play some video games now. Uh, yes, ChatGPT does do the same thing. It does like to talk, 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 talk. Although we figured out how to keep from doing that because ours doesn't do that, right? Um, but you guys be good. It's time to go. I'm gonna see you guys. We're gonna play some video games. Bye, Bye YouTubes. Bye, YouTubes.